So for this next example, what we'll do is take this cube, look at it in top view, S, Y, and scale it in. And while looking at it from the front, we will just hold control to bring up our dots, being in box mode, of course. And with Alt and Shift, we can bring out a square box. And we'll just tab it to live, and I'll press G, Y in order to move it up the Y axis, which is local to this. And then looking at it in top view, we can just draw an end gun cut it, mirror to the other side, mirror to the other side of that. Maybe even put a line directly down the middle from the top. And we're just performing just some cuts to give it some visual interest. Maybe a tick here. Maybe break this area out. And so far so good. Just making a um, kind of sci-fi fence enclosure. And with spacebar, we can just apply that. So I'm going to use bull scroll and we'll bring back this previous shape. And I will just scale this in to actually fit the enclosure that we need it. And we'll Alt W, go up to Hops tool and just shift click diamond, which will just place a diamond inside of this box. And here we are. We basically made our gate section. And by pressing one, we can get out of the cutter collection. And, you know, there's probably a few more cuts I want to do just to really work it from different sides. You know, we can't leave out our old buddy wedge. Wedge is just there for us whenever we want to just detail an edge. Just tick, tick. And we'll do the same down here. Maybe even raise it up. And we'll perform another tick here as well with the wedge. You know, the thing about wedge is once you get started with it, you just can't stop. All right. And so now we can select this or select everything with A. And we'll press Q, O, T. And we'll just jump to, to shape. And we're just moving it in. And we want to make sure that we cut this in an area where it will extend nicely. So maybe about here. And we'll press C to keep the caps. And now we can see our lines kind of representing. And we just want to catch our lines at their lowest moment. It's the best time to strike. And we'll raise this up. And here we are with our array decap gate. And we can just go inside array and just roll the wheel. And we can make it as long or as short as we need. So. That is it in a nutshell. In fact, I'm surprised that we were able to catch it so close without any serious merge issues. However, I feel that we could probably actually grab that even better. So let's zoom in and just try to get all technical with it. And we'll just hit to shape and roll the wheel. And an interesting thing about decap is once you jump to it, it will uh, reset the axis so you might have saw a change to axis but now I'm back in decap able to hold shift to do just the finest incrementals you've ever seen and we will just click and we have our shape and so from here we can just array it out and we see that we may have even got a better grab than the first one but you know the optical illusions of everything are just playing tricks on me and I could still see a little bit of differential. However, we did achieve the goal of getting our gate. In fact, we probably want to make this part a little bit longer, but you know, this will prevent cats from getting out, you know, so let's Alt G, place it back in the center. And we've once again worked off of the center without thinking about the rest of it. So let's just shift H, hide everything. And let's re-reveal the uh, decap meshes that build this up. So there's the first piece. Where's the second piece? We'll assume that this is built up of decap B001. So we'll enable both of those. And we'll select the main one. And by just pressing A and G, we can actually bring everything back to get a respectable origin. And let's shift H, hide everything else. And we see that our fence is intact. So let's bring back those shapes again with control Z. And we could actually bring these up over it. Do our same thing as before where we parent it. 
or uh, make them children of the main shape. And then we just scale them down once we're in the kid op scene. So I'm just going to select just a single gate and somehow start a box cutter. We'll go to new demo and we'll choose create insert. And here we are in the scene. Looks like we brought in something extra here. What is that? We'll just forget about that. So this is the main object. This thing is a wire. So is this one. And we can just S0, S0. So kind of a hacky way to work, but we see that it gets the job done. And we'll just call this, um, well, we don't want to call it the name of a feature that made it. Uh, we'll call it, uh, gate one underscore one. I have to think on my feet here and we'll just put that in and we'll choose to save our insert and we don't have to deal with the naming. And we can look at this from camera view and we see that we probably need to scale this down and then do camera to insert in order to get it to fit in the frame. And then maybe scale it down even more so it fits even better. And we'll just take this moment to, well, let's see what we're about to get for the render. And we could probably do better than that. So we'll give it a blank material and we'll choose to render our thumbnail. And our thumbnail is going to look basically something like this. So from here, we can just close our scene and we're back in the main file, which I always save these files as insert test. So this time I'm going to control click power save and we're just going to call this insert test. And then when we press enter, it'll save the file. So there's been some fixes recently to ensure that our power save compatibility works absolutely perfect. And so I could just control in, make a new file. And let's just press X and delete this. And we'll just go under kit ops, jump to new demo. And where is it? Starts with a G, add insert. And here we are with our gate. And we can just get in here and just array our gate as needed. However, it looks like with auto select insert, it'll get a little weird. So we want to turn off auto select. So that way we can actually array this properly. So you want to make sure you have the first object selected. And this is just the first step. We can also go even further with this and make it where we can control this with a curve or an empty to stretch it out. I mean, if you know me, I could dice and curve this thing all day to get to stretch everywhere it's needed. But just like that, we're able to quickly create a dynamic gate and get it inside of kit ops and be able to just quickly fence in whatever animals we're needing to contain. So with that, I can wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.